And uh, oh, I see four people signed up. So again, thanks you for taking the time today on your busy schedule to join me. I will be a host and facilitator today. I'm very excited because uh, I'm welcoming somebody to talk about a great subject. I think uh, that is quite interesting for a lot of people. So just to introduce myself for anyone who doesn't know me, I'm Isabel Litzler. I'm the founder of Play at HC. I do career planning and coaching. Uh, helping people improve uh, their potential and find the job that they love. And I'm also helping entrepreneurs get set up. And this is the reason why I want to invite also different guests. And I'm starting today, this is the first webinar where I'm inviting someone to talk about the subject of SEO because I think there's a lot of buzz around it. And it's quite a big topic, I think, for most people, whether you're starting a business, whether you have a business, or even as a job seeker, you know, you want to understand a little bit how Google works and how to position yourself. So today I'm very excited to welcome Ashley Folks. Uh, he has his own website. Uh, he's someone that helps people basically improve their SEO and uh, improve their positioning in Google. So he will make a presentation today. You're welcome to ask questions in the different sections so that after each section you can ask your questions and he will answer. You're also welcome to ask questions a bit later on the meetup. Uh, and I have it open as well, so I will keep checking it. And if you want to ask a questions live today, you can click on the Rubik's Cube. When you click, you will be able to enter your question and I will be reading the questions out loud so that uh, Ashley can answer. So without any more waiting, uh, Ashley, I um, move over to you now. All right, I'm not. You're I'm not, on. Am I? I don't see myself. Do you see me now? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Hi, everybody. I'm up in the north of Switzerland. Actually, you're getting a very nice reflection from my glasses. I'll, I'll keep those down low. Um, yeah, I do SEO and, and web design for a lot of big and small companies in Switzerland and also in the United States. I work with, with quite a lot of people. And today I wanted to present to you some of my general tips and tricks to do with SEO and explain to you how SEO works um, because that's not always clear to people what exactly SEO is and and how it works because yeah you hear about Google you hear about SEO but maybe you have no idea how that how that works or how that uh, applies to you so I'm going to do a presentation today to explain that all to you break it all down um, show you exactly how Google works how Google doesn't work um, all the different tips and tricks you can do in your business and give you some stuff you can walk away with today and, and apply directly to your business. So it's not just theory. There's actually stuff that you can do to improve your position in Google and your understanding of, of how this stuff works so that you can do it in the future. So I'm just going to put my presentation on. And can you just confirm that's showing? Yes, it's okay. on. Okay, cool. All right. So now you won't see me anymore so much. You'll see my presentation. Um, and unfortunately, I can't make this full screen because that affects the way it works in Hangouts. But we'll cycle through the, the presentation like this. And actually, I'll see if I can quickly get rid of this uh, view here. Anyway, okay. There. Yeah. Bit more space. Okay, cool. All right. So the title of the presentation today is "How to Get Found on Google and Get More Customers." Now, that's not specifically what this presentation is about. It's a general thing that if you get found on Google, you will get more customers and and more traffic to your website, and the traffic will bring the right customers and therefore get you money. So that's the whole gist of of how getting found on Google can can help you. So. Before we move on to that, I'll just show you a quick agenda of, of what we're going to go over today so that you know where we're headed. First, I'll quickly tell you a little bit about me because you probably have no idea who I am or why I can tell you all about SEO. Uh, then we're going to look at why SEO is important and what it is exactly and also what it isn't. And then we're going to have a look at some examples of some clients that I've worked with and how their traffic and positioning Google has improved from very small changes and more longer-term changes as well, just to show you what is possible, 
what kinds of businesses uh, that have had these kind of results and that it is possible for almost anybody. Um, then we're going to go through how you actually do it, the different pieces that you need to have in place to, to get the best results. And then lastly, we're going to show some steps that you can take after this presentation to go and apply to your website and, and your business online so that you can get some success from, from Google. So just a quick rundown about me. I don't want to spend too much time talking about me, but you might hear my accent if you have a very good ear. I'm from Australia originally. I've been in Switzerland for 14, nearly 15 years, actually. I live in the north, just near Zurich, in uh, a town called Wettingen, which is near Baden. Some of you might know Baden. Uh, I originally came here as a web developer and have since moved on to online marketing and SEO. Uh, the reason that that happened was because I was developing my own software as a service tool, which if you don't know what that is, it's something like Dropbox or, uh, yeah, there's a whole bunch of them. Basically, anything that you buy a service for online uh, that's in the cloud or whatever that's called software as a service. I was developing uh, such a tool using my experience as a web developer. And then I got to a point where I wanted to sell this tool and I had no idea how to get that started online. So I started learning all of this stuff. And then instead of selling my tool, I started applying what I'd learned and, and started uh, my business in, in 2013. So now what I do is I help businesses like how I used to be with no idea or with even a small idea of uh, how to do the online marketing stuff, how to get customers from the internet. So helping people with content, blog posts, getting traffic from SEO, uh, fixing their websites, or even just designing websites from zero. I also do that for customers using WordPress. That's uh, the platform that I use. And yeah, that's what I spend my days doing is helping people in, in all different countries around the world uh, get results from their online business. So SEO, why should you care about SEO? Now you're obviously here, so you maybe know that it's important, but I just want to drive home this point so that you really understand why SEO is important for your business. So if, for example, as a person doing anything in your life these days, and you think of something and you want to maybe buy something or learn something or solve a problem, one of the first places you go is actually on the internet and to Google, or maybe you use Bing, maybe you use Yahoo, but you're going to go on and search for the price of something or where you can buy something or how to learn something, books, uh, articles, or even how to solve a problem. You might go and have a look at YouTube videos or how-to articles. So I can imagine that most of you will be on Google a number of times a day, whether it's for work or for pleasure, whether you're buying products or planning your holidays or planning your weekend or even just looking for stuff for hobbies. You're always looking for stuff online and you'll often start doing that in Google. So as you can imagine, if you're on the other end of that, imagine that you're the person supplying that information and also supplying that product. It's better that you get found for the questions that your customers have. So if your customer is looking for something and that something is your product, then it's awesome if you can be in the top pages of Google. And that's why SEO is so important because everybody's online and everybody's looking for stuff and your business could be the answer to those questions. So just to give you some numbers, it's pretty crazy actually when I looked up this statistic. There are over 100 billion searches on Google per month. And now if you think about that and divide that by the active world population on the internet, I think there's about 3 billion or something. We're talking about 30 searches per month per person. So one per day, but that's only average. Of course, some won't use the internet much and some will use it a lot. So people are on Google a number of times a day, it's clear. And there's billions and billions and billions of people and searches looking for stuff that potentially you could be selling them. So if you're not getting your SEO done, you're missing out on all this free traffic that Google and Yahoo and Bing and all these guys could be sending you. So if you can imagine, just to take another example of why this is important, if I was looking for a new camera and it's something I do maybe way too often, 
the first place I usually go, and actually the first place I do go, apart from asking one of my friends who's also into cameras, is I, I look on Google. And the first thing I'll start doing is typing in general searches like best cameras or top 10 SLR cameras or something like this. And then I'll start exploring and finding more information. And then you may also start drilling down and, and looking at specific models of cameras once you know which one you're interested in. But it it's also it comes the other way. There could be people who don't even know they need a camera. And so I could be typing in, why are my images so bad on my website? Or how can I take better pictures of my products for my website? And the answer to that question is, well, you need a better camera. And then your website would appear to provide that camera for the person. So Google could be useful to you, not only to sell your products, but also to write articles to solve problems. And in that article, you can also sell your products. So you also have to expand your thinking when you think of search engines and realize that it's not just getting your product ranked on Google, it's also getting blog posts and other content ranked, which leads people to, to learning about you and your business and buying your products. So the possibilities are really, really huge. And just to give you an example from my website, I have about 13,000 visitors to my website every month, uh, my blog, my personal website, and my business website. And of that, about 60% is from Google. Actually, maybe even more if I'm looking at that statistic correctly. It's probably 60 to 70%. And on most websites, that is about average. Most websites that are set up reasonably well for SEO will get the majority of their traffic from Google. So if you go into your analytics and you see that your, your search traffic, your organic search traffic is not very high, then that's really a sign that you need to be doing better SEO. And as you can see on my website, and I've tuned my website, I get tons of traffic from SEO. And if I was to turn that off, I would be down to maybe 4,000 visits a month, which is a huge loss for me. So again, SEO is really, really important. But then, of course, the question is, what is SEO? And this is where it gets a little bit confusing for people because I've had chats with people about what I do, just in general, people I've never met before who are asking what I do for work or people at uh, conferences or whatever who don't understand SEO. And a lot of people believe that SEO is when you pay Google to put you on the top. That's not SEO. Just so we're clear, that's Google AdWords, that's you buying Google ads to go on the top of search. If you go on any search, you'll always see th two to three usually ads on the top. And in the top left corner, it'll say ad in the yellow box. And sometimes you get them on the side. Depending if you're on mobile, you'll get them on the top and the bottom. But you can pay for those. And that's Google ads. That is not SEO. Because with that, when you stop paying, you stop appearing. SEO doesn't work like that. SEO, once you get to the top, usually you stay there over a very long period of time and you don't pay to get there. You work your way to getting there. So it's a very different thing. So let's explore this a little bit deeper just so we start to understand what we're talking about when we say SEO. Google has been changing the way things work a lot in the last few years. And right now in 2016, SEO is all about giving the best result to a search that somebody does on the internet. So before you could manipulate Google by putting lots of words into your posts that were the word that the person was typing into Google. So if they're looking for camera, if you put camera in 500 times, you could appear at the top. Then Google realized that that wasn't smart, so they fixed that. And then people were putting tons of useless links to their website and then also getting to the top. Now Google has also stopped that. So now what we're down to is if you're not providing really, really useful content to people, whether it's a blog post or a video or an infographic or whatever it is, when I say content, it could be anything, um, you're not going to stay on the top of Google. If you manage to get there, you're not going to stay there for very long. So SEO first and foremost in 2016 is all about producing the best result for the people who are searching on Google because it's Google's business. 
it's their business to please the people who are searching to bring them back to get them maybe to click on the ad sometimes and if that's not happening google's not happy so they're going to push you down so it's all about google making money and if you're not giving good results they're not going to put you on the top and they have ways of measuring that so that they are looking and watching and the other thing you need to think about is that seo is also all about getting your potential customers to find you on the internet on on search through these best results and to get them to your website for the kinds of things that you want to be found for so again if you're selling cameras it would be best cameras or how to fix a camera or how to buy a, a downloadable screen for your camera or whatever it might be but seo is all about getting you to the top for the most useful searches for your potential customers and providing them the best results so that's generally what we're talking about and it's quite complicated because google has 200 factors or 200 things in general that they look at which they apply to their search results in order to decide if it's a good result or a bad result but we know more or less what they all are because a lot of people have done a lot of experiments because Google certainly doesn't tell us what they are, what doesn't tell us many of them anyway. But it is, it is a little bit complicated, so you need to know what you're doing. So just to give you an example of some of the things that SEO is affected by, your ranking on, on Google is, is affected by, the number one thing is links to your website. That can have one of the biggest effects on where your website appears. And it can't just be any link. And it can't just be a link from your best friend's website. It has to be a relevant link in a contextual piece of content. So it has to be a piece of content that's talking about a relevant topic for it to be really useful. So Google looks at the links. They also look at the topics of your page, what your page is talking about. They look at how many words are on there. They look at how, many, how long people stay on your website. Because if people leave after three seconds, Google knows that you were on search, you left search, and you came back to search three seconds later, obviously the website's not very good. So Google's going to start to think your content is not good. So how long you're staying on the website, how fast your website loads, whether or not your website works on a mobile phone, because as we all know, you're on your iPhone or your, your Android and you go on a website and it's really, really, really difficult to use. You have to zoom in to click on the links that annoys people a lot. So Google knows that and they're testing that and they're reducing your ranking in Google if you're not mobile responsive, if you're not ready for mobile devices. They also look at things like whether your website's secure. That's not a huge thing, but it's something that Google's looking at more these days. And there are another 90 odd things that Google looks at, but these are some of the most important ones. So before I jump on to some examples, I'm just going to quickly check with Isabel if there was any questions already. I'm looking to see if there's any questions. I don't see anything. Um, maybe people need a bit of time to think of their questions. I have a question, actually, um, that I think may be interesting. Uh, can anybody improve SEO, or is it just, for example, only big websites or websites set up a certain way? I think that could be something. Uh, People wonder. Yeah, I mean, SEO is something that any any website can do, absolutely any website. And I mean, I have clients ranging from people with quite small websites um, who have maybe six or seven pages. So a few service pages, a home page, a contact page. Um, you're better off if you have a blog. That can get you a lot more results in Google, and that's something I work on with some of my clients, getting them started with creating blog posts and stuff. But you don't have to have that. And you can improve your SEO just from where you are today. Um, another example, I had a, a client in Australia. She had a very, very small website. And she was in a very, very specific um, niche called uh, Color Consulting. And I'll show you an example of her in a minute. But um, she was actually, I think, on page eight or ten of google which is the same as being nowhere on google and once we fixed up her website she jumped to the top of page two so position 12 or 13 i think it was and that was just from tuning her website so 
yeah, you can certainly improve SEO even as a small business. It's something we should all be aware of because, yeah, there's so many thousands, hundreds of thousands, even within Switzerland, of people searching all day, every day. And it's better if they find you instead of your competition. So, yeah, basically everybody can do it. So. And then my other question is, uh, I've heard some experts say that it's about keywords that you put in the source of your website. Uh, that's that's really how you get better positioning. And then I had other people who say it's all about content. So could you maybe give us an update on that one? Um, I'll go through that later in the presentation. Okay. But okay. Um, yeah, that is a that is a common question, especially in the last year or so. Keywords um were very much a focus of seo and i still believe from all my research and, and experience that they still are it's just that we use them a little bit differently right now than maybe three years ago because three years ago as i said you could just throw them in an article and push it to the top now you can't do that anymore so oh. but you still need to be aware of what the most relevant words are for your particular field. Yeah, your field, your topic, your customers, because if you don't know what the words are, the key as keywords as we call them, um, then you could be writing something that no one will ever see because you might think it's a useful word, but no one's looking for it. So if you don't know what people are looking for, if you don't do that research, then you're just guessing. So yeah, keywords are still very useful for figuring out um, what it is that people are actually actually looking for so okay well i see some questions actually from uh, our participants so julia borkenhagen i hope i pronounce it right is it a problem for your google index if you republish blog articles from your blog onto linkedin and medium no generally not um a lot of the big guys are out there doing that and um i certainly don't think it's a big issue i don't i haven't seen any any tests on it but even a lot of SEO guys are doing similar things. But what I would do just as a strategy, not necessarily so much about SEO, is I would put a smaller version, like a summarized version, not just chopped off in the first paragraph, but rewrite the content maybe in just a few hundred words and then link back to the full article from those places. I think Medium, yeah, Medium tends to have larger articles, but LinkedIn Pulse especially, that's quite a common way of of getting around the problem of maybe having duplicate content. Um, and also, yeah, people have gone, okay, that's an interesting topic. I want to learn more. And then they go to your blog, which ultimately is what you want them to do. You want them always to come to your blog. So I would try and put a reduced version and then link back to your, to your original if you can. And then uh, Jessica Nassif is asking, is it better to have a bilingual website, French English, than just French? <laughs> Um, that depends on your situation. If your market is only French, then I would say it's pretty much irrelevant. Um, but if you're targeting non-French speakers, so if you're online, for example, and you can serve people online without having to visit them physically, and you're happy to do business in English, then certainly do it in as many languages as you can, because the more languages you have, the more likely you are to get found in the different Google searches in those languages. So yeah, it depends on the business, mm -hmm. but certainly the more languages, the better, especially if you're online, because then if you're only doing French and you're not doing English, but you could do English, you're missing a huge audience. So yeah, I would start thinking about that. Okay. So no more questions on the screen. I'll let okay. you continue. Cool. All right. Thanks for the questions, guys. It's nice to have some some chit chat and some feedback. Um, so I'm just going to show you a few quick success stories from my clients, not to say that I'm awesome, but just to tell you guys that it is possible. And you know, some of these clients are really, really small businesses, and some of them are slightly larger businesses who are just starting out. So to give you some hope and some examples of what is possible if you do the right things, and the kinds of results that I've seen um, from applying these just hang on, I'm going to have some water. So the first one I wanted to start off with was the woman that I was talking about uh, in Sydney. And she was running a, a very small business. 
She didn't almost want to do anything on her website. She set it up on Wix, which I would never recommend because it's really hard to, to change anything. But she liked to set it up. She wanted to set it up, so she did it herself. And then she's like, okay, well, this is great, but no one's finding my website. Um, I'm only getting business from direct contact with physical contact with people. I would like to be found on Google and there isn't much competition in Sydney. So can you get me up the top? So just a quick consult with her and not doing a lot of work. We basically tuned her website uh, with a few SEO tricks and tips. And she went from page nine, which is position, what was it? It was position 83, which is on the ninth, so third one down on the ninth page of Google, which no one will ever see. I mean, unless they're really, really, really into pressing next, next, next on Google, which no one does. Um, and we moved her to, to position 11. And that happened, as you can see on this chart, uh, each one of those little black words on the bottom there is a day. So we started on the 14th of December and on the 20th of December, she'd already moved to position 11. And that was just a small amount of work tuning her website. So, and she didn't have a lot of content. I think she had maybe four or five pages. And so she was starting to be found. And I, and I stayed in contact with her after this work we did with her because she didn't want to spend more money on, on this. But um, she continued to get more and more business from this because she's now on the top of page two of Google. And yeah, I mean, people do get to page two. Page three it starts to become more difficult. Page four is is almost impossible. But the top of page two, you're going to get people finding you. So she was really happy with that. From just a little bit of work, she went from page nine to page two. So that's quite amazing because it was quite a new a new website as well. So, and then I worked with a, a video company here in Zurich, and they were actually not almost appearing on any page of Google. They couldn't find themselves on Google. And they came to me and said, look, can you get us <laughs> into Google because we're not there? And so similar kind of problem. Their website wasn't set up correctly uh, for Google. So we did an audit of their website, an SEO audit, as we call it. And we got them. You can see this chart here. It's a bit of a crazy wiggly line. In the beginning, we got them to, I think it was position... 45 or something after tuning their website and then doing a bit more work on the website and then we finished the work after a couple of months and then they continued working on it themselves creating new content and to that right today i think they're at about position 13 um, and it's a very very competitive industry video production in, in zurich so they're doing really well and um, yeah, I mean, this was again just from tuning their website. So they went from almost zero, nowhere on Google to page two. So that was really cool. And of course, if you do more work and start spending more money, you can get higher up. But even just from doing a little bit of work, you can you can get results. And then I worked with another company last year who were another um, software as a service company. They're a startup company uh, in Silicon Valley, and they do a social media product. And they found me through my blog and asked me if I could do some SEO for them because they were just not getting enough traffic. They were getting some traffic. You can see on this graph here, I think the left-hand side, when I started working with them, they were getting about 1,600 visitors per month from Google. And so I went in and we tuned all their blog posts and their website for all the basic SEO stuff. And within a few months, I think we started in September, October, and then by January, they'd already gone up by something like 50% increase in traffic. And uh, and that continued over time. And then we did some other things with them, which I'll show you in a minute. I mean, we got a 20% increase just in one month from, from tuning their website. So this is just from doing the right things, which you're, you're probably not doing now. I mean, if you are, I'm guessing you wouldn't be here. But uh, there are some basic things that you can do and you can learn and you can already improve your results. And this stuff, once you've done it, the traffic just keeps coming. Like my 13,000 visitors a month, that just keeps coming or growing. It doesn't usually go backwards. So it's really cool sort of to do this stuff and, and get more and more traffic, free traffic from, from somebody like Google. So Ashley, I get a question from Kelly Hungerford about 
you're talking about the color consultant. I think that was a good example. Could you share some of the tactics uh, you use to help her move from page nine to page two? Uh, yeah, I'll get that. In, I'll get into that a bit in, okay. in, in the next section. Um, but yeah, there's some some specific things that uh, that you need to do. And yeah, I'll jump into that in in a second. Okay. Um, another thing I did for for this uh, social media software company um, because they were creating all of their own content and they weren't spending a lot of time or money on it. So I said to them, look, this month with the money you're paying me, rather than doing the other stuff I normally do for you and, and tuning your website and, and a bunch of other link building and all the things I do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a really good piece of content for you to demonstrate to you what can happen when you find the right keywords that are relevant to your business and you create a really good piece of content and the potential traffic for this uh, content was something like six or 7,000 visitors per month. And you can see on the right here, this uh, chart, this sort of zigzag chart of their traffic, which I got them to send me after the campaign was finished. They went up huge in traffic from this blog post because we got them to position two on Google, which was amazing because we were going against huge websites like Mashable and some of their competitors in the industry, which have been doing this for 10 years. So I was really surprised we got to position two because I didn't expect position two. But uh, yeah, it just goes to show you what's possible with a really great piece of content, which I wrote for them, and a really targeted keyword, which I found was possible to rank for. And these are some of the tricks you need to do your research, find out if it's possible to rank for something, because if it's not, then you can save yourself the time on it. So this one was really amazing. And uh, I've, I've done a similar one on my website this month, um, which is just starting to rank this week. I published it last week. And I'm trying to push that up to position top five as well. And uh, let's see if it's possible. It's not always possible, but um, these experiments are quite interesting. And another one that I'm working on at the moment, one of my clients in, in the States, um, this is just a graph. It, it actually looks kind of pointless, this graph. But as you can see on the left-hand side, um, we started working with them and they weren't really ranking in Google. And after tuning their website, we got them to position 12. And then gradually over the months, it's getting harder and harder because their competitor is massive and the competitor is dominating almost all of the top 10. And so right now, as of today, we've got them to position seven for one of their top keywords for the products they're selling against the people who supply the product, which is quite funny. Um, but yeah, we keep pushing them higher and higher over the months. And uh, it's just to show you that, yeah, even when you're going against really big websites, you shouldn't necessarily be afraid. It is possible, especially websites like Amazon and stuff, they rank everywhere for everything, but not always for the right reasons. So you can challenge them very easily because they're not always working on their website or their pages. They've got millions of pages. They don't have time to work on them all. So you can beat these websites if, if you do the right stuff. So yeah, that's it for the uh, results. I mean, basically, if you do the right stuff, you can get, get results. And I just wanted to show you that because, I mean, that's what I offer my clients just to let you guys know if any of you need help. Um, I do SEO website audits, which is what I did for a lot of these clients to see what's wrong with your website and to see how we can fix it to try and get you higher on Google. And then we tune the website so that it's ready to go higher and it'll also start to move higher just from tuning the website and, and doing the audit. Um, one of the other key things that's really useful to do is to do the right keyword research because without knowing what words your customers are looking for, you're never going to get into the places where your customers are looking. So we also do that. And then the last thing we need to do for our clients is to build links to their website because that's important to Google. Google looks at links. So once you get to a sort of an equilibrium position in Google, the only way to get higher is to start building links, relevant links to your website. And that's something that I also offer my clients because it's really hard to do that yourself. That's one of the hardest things to do in SEO. And sometimes I do one-on-one -on -one coaching if people want to get a strategy for how to fix the SEO or how to do SEO or they want to learn how to do SEO. So if you're looking for any of those things, you can uh, get in touch with me from my website. I'll give you links at the end. Anyway, let's get on with the rest of the presentation. Um, 
Any more questions? I have someone who asked a question. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Um, so I don't find it here. Uh, he says he asked a question. I just can't find it. OK, we'll have a look and I'll, mm -hmm. I'll continue. We'll do it at the end of this, this section. So now we're just going to break down the main three areas of SEO so that you sort of get a global picture of how SEO all fits together because it's not a simple area to understand and there is a lot of confusion around about how SEO works, especially today because a lot of the old stuff doesn't work anymore. So SEO is basically about your website and having a really good foundation on your website. It's about having really good content on your website. So whether that's your service and product pages or your blog posts um, or videos or whatever it is, but it's better to have text because Google can't read video so easily. And then having the links pointing to your website, which pushes you higher in Google as well. So you need those three things. If you only have one, you're only going to get so far. But Usually you start with number one, then go to number two, and then go to number three. That's usually how I work with, with clients and with my own website. So with your website, you need to make sure that it's well structured. It's easy to find your content so that you have your navigation at the top to the main pages in your website. So your products, your services, your contact page, so that people can get in touch and buy your stuff. Um, you need to make sure your website loads reasonably fast. So you should check that with a tool like Pingdom, P-I-N-G-D-O-M. Um, that can quickly check your website and you're looking for about three or four seconds, maybe five at the worst. If your website's slower than that, um, you have a bit of a problem because people are going to leave and that's the last thing you want. So a fast website is great for your customers because they won't leave. It's also great for Google because Google's measuring it as well. So it's really important for two reasons. And then there's a bunch of other things you need to be thinking about. Um, HTTPS, so secure websites. If you're building a new website, I suggest you go HTTPS and ask your hosting company for that. If you've got an old website, it's debatable if it's worth worrying about. Um, multiple languages are useful, as we got asked in the last question. If you're in a country like Switzerland or in Europe, um, and serving multiple audiences, you should have multiple languages available. And I suggest doing them in subdirectories, so like slash DE for German, slash EN for English, because it's easier to do that than, than separate websites. You also need to have really good content, depending on the industry you're in. Um, at the last talk I did in Beale, we had a guy there who was in beekeeping. I suggest that his industry is really easy to do good content in because he doesn't have many competitors. But if you're in my industry, like online marketing, the competition is really, really tough. So I need to create really amazing content to get people's attention. So your content is really important. And you need to sort of have a look what your competitors are doing and try and do better than them. And what I mean by that is when you're creating a blog post or an article about a particular topic that's relevant to your customers, make it as useful as you possibly can. Just think from your customer's perspective how happy they would be when they found your content because they'll become a customer of yours in the future. If you help them today, they'll become a customer tomorrow. And you should also start to create content as regularly as you can. You don't need to publish daily. You don't need to publish weekly, but as often as you can and as regularly as you can, even if it's only once a month, you should try to create regular content because you'll get more and more traffic from Google and you'll get more and more customers as a result of that on your website. So the last piece of that puzzle, we've talked about it already, is basically links. And I don't want to go into too much about this because it's extremely complex, but you need links to your website. So you get links from social media websites, you get links from the Google Business Directory, you get links from things like uh, search.ch uh, in Switzerland. You can get a link from them, although I think you have to pay for it. Um, there's a whole bunch of places you can get links, but the best links are from other bloggers, and that's the hardest stuff to get. So that's usually what I do for my clients. And if you know other bloggers who are in your industry, see if you can get links from them. But that's really, especially in relevant articles that are pointing to your relevant articles. So if I'm writing a piece about cameras and you have a camera to sell and I mention your camera and link to your camera, that's really good for that page. So 
that's what helps move you up in Google. So as we're ending each section, any more questions? I have I have a few actually from Tony Georgi. The first one is um, basically how and in what kind of websites do you attract links for small businesses? Yeah, it's quite tough. Um, and that's what I said, the links, the link strategy is why actually I'm probably still in a job is because <laughs> because that's the hardest part to do and the hardest part to learn. Um, if you have a small business website and all you have is your basic pages, so your home page, your contact page, your product pages, um, services pages, whatever it is you're selling, if that's all you have, it's really hard to get links without getting somebody to do it for you because you need contacts, you need people who are willing to link to that. And unless you're selling something really revolutionary, it's really difficult. Like you'll find a lot of startups get linked to because they're creating really innovative products. They get linked to by technical blogs and stuff because it's amazing what they're doing. But if you're just selling, if you're just another camera store or another pool cleaning store, there's no reason to link to you because there's a hundred of them and you're not doing anything amazing. So the answer to that question is you need to blog. You need to write content that's better than everybody else's and go out and tell people about it. Put it on social media, tell people in the industry, suggest that they might find it useful. Don't ask them to link to it. They will link to it if they want to. But just let people know about your content and, and get it out there because that's the only way you're going to get links as a, as a small business. And it's a lot of work. And that's, again, that's why people pay me because it is a lot of work. So I go out and build relationships with these kind of people, find these people who link to you. Um, I often have to write articles for them to get a link back to you. So it's, it's hard work. Um, and that's the toughest, toughest part of SEO. I found a few more questions on Meetup. I just refreshed the page now. Uh, someone, Annika, is asking, how can we know which website templates will give us a good base for SEO and to add on blogs? There are tons of them, which initially seem good, but are not. Yeah, I mean, if you're talking about buying something like Squarespace or Wix or, or yeah, I mean, I don't like those guys so much. I mean, I don't, I don't use them a lot, but the problem is that it's really hard to get down into the details of, of what works for SEO because there's a number of elements on your page, on every page, which Google looks at and is not visible. They're in the, the code in the back. And if you're not able to get to those easily and modify them easily, um, then it's it's not great. Like a lot of these guys will say, oh, we're SEO friendly. And even in WordPress, the area that I work in, they'll say, oh, our, our theme is SEO friendly. I mean, it's complete garbage because there's almost nothing they can do to help your SEO. The SEO stuff is all done separately to your actual template. So it depends what you mean by template, but basically you need to be able to get to things like the title of the page, the meta description, um, the heading, um, the image titles and the image alt tags, things like this. Um, there's a downloadable list I can give you guys uh, later. There's a link I've got uh, in the presentation for you to get that. I've got a list of the things you need to be doing uh, to, to tweak all of your pages and posts. and you need to find a way to get to these things. Most of them are accessible in the blog, but a couple of them are not. So it needs to be your um, your meta stuff, the meta description, not the meta keywords. You can ignore that. It's completely irrelevant. And the title and the meta description are the main two that are normally hard to get to. So if you can get to those, the rest is kind of irrelevant. Anyone who says something is SEO ready or SEO friendly or whatever, I often I don't have a clue what they're talking about because I think they just do it to sell stuff. So, but yeah, if you want some information, if you've got something you're looking at, send me um, a request by my website or my contact page or something, and I'll have a look for you. It's no problem. Okay, and then I have Ludmila coming from the Lausanne uh, group. I would like to know which tools I can use to define the relevant list of keywords. Without paying any money, um, the best thing you can do, and I actually need to jump on and test this again because I've heard it's getting harder to do, you need to sign up for Google AdWords. 
So if you've got a G, you need a Gmail account, any Gmail account. If you don't have one, just create a garbage one or one in your business name or whatever. Then go to adwords.google.com and create an account, and you will probably have to give them a credit card. And then there's a tool under the tools list called the Keyword Planner, and that is what you need to use to find words that people are looking for that have searches that they will tell you what people are searching for so if you type in a word and it, it just has a line as the search volume that means no one's looking for it pretty much i mean it's never possible 100 percent to say but yeah that's basically how you so do that so it's on google okay yeah mm. okay i'll quickly move through this last yep. section just so we've got time yep. um so that's actually what this is about. This is the keyword planner here and how you get to it. And someone told me the other day that you also need to start a campaign, uh, an AdWords campaign, in order to get access to this. I don't know if that's true. I've never seen that. But a guy I know online said that to me. He couldn't use this tool without starting a campaign. So maybe you need to start an ad campaign, a garbage one, and just stop it before it spends any money. You don't have to spend any money. You just need to give your credit card. So basically, when you go into this tool and you start typing in topics, just general topics, one or two words, so cameras, best cameras, just to follow my example, they'll give you, as a result, this page here, which shows you the kinds of words that are coming up, the kinds of volume, so how many searches per month people are looking for this stuff. And there's a tab just below the bar graph on the top called groups. So you can click on that and Google will suggest to you groupings of words they've found. And you could click through those and start to see the kinds of things that your potential customers are actually searching for on a monthly basis online. And these are the things you want to target. And there's another column here called competition, which is actually ad competition. And if it's low, it usually means that most people are not competing for it, which means that it's probably not that difficult to get to the top of Google if you do the right things, which, again, is not as easy as it sounds, but is possible. So you want to go for the low keywords. So one of the things you want to do, just letting you know how to do that, um, this is a downloadable from my last talk. You can go to this URL. Um, you have to give your email address. That's unfortunately the way it's set up, but um, I'm not going to send you any spam. I'm just going to send you SEO tips. So if you don't want SEO tips, don't sign up for it. <laughs> I'm going to give you lots of useful SEO tips. Basically, the thing you need to do is this list, this downloadable list that I'll give you shows you where you need to put the keywords in your page to rank as best you can without building links. So you need to use this uh, to get started with with ranking on all your pages and especially your your main pages like your service pages and your product page and your home page and any blog posts that you do and you should also format your content as well as possible break it up into headings don't write like you used to write back when you're in high school like massive paragraphs that doesn't work on the internet people don't read people are lazy just lots of headings lots of bullet points short text short paragraphs is the best way to, to write for online audiences. And why is that not going to the next one? But the biggest problem is there's two, bil uh, 2 million blog posts published every day. So if you're writing blog posts, that's great. But how good are they? Because if they're not great, then your chances of getting anybody's attention is not that great. So it used to be that 500 words and if you use um, a tool like WordPress, I don't know how it is on any of these other tools, but it tells you how many words your blog post is. Um, otherwise, you can go to wordcounter.com or something like that. You want at least 500 words. I suggest 800 to 1,000 words, which will take you a couple of hours to write. Um, if you're not doing that, I would suggest don't bother unless the topic really is only possible to write 500 words for. That could be, but if the topic could be longer, you could provide more detail, you could link to other resources, add images, add videos, even videos you find on YouTube. You don't have to make them yourself. Make your guide, your blog post, your content 
as good as you possibly can, even if it means you're only going to publish one every two months, it's better that it's a really, really good piece of content and you're more likely to get visitors and people who like you and want to buy from you than creating garbage every month just because you you feel like you have to. So spend your time creating your content. And then, unfortunately, you need to go and tell people about it. Share it on groups you're in, forums, um, tell your friends, tell your mum, tell your social media buddies, and tell them more than once because they may not be listening when you tell them. Tell them again tomorrow or next week. Don't spam them, but tell them a lot. Email anybody you know, email your list. If you don't have a list, you should start a list. That's a complete other topic. But creating a piece of content and not sharing it with the internet, you're going to struggle to get any kind of attention. So you need to start getting used to sharing your content, building a social media presence, at least on one platform. You don't have to be on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Pinterest. Just do one, but do it well. And then you've got to get some links. And a lot of these links will come from people who like your content. They want to talk about it in a piece they're writing, or you can suggest it to them if you know they're writing something, or they just wrote something. Maybe they could add your link in, especially if it was recently published. They're more likely to, to be open to it. You need to network online. You need to get to know other bloggers. And that's the hard stuff. And that's, again, why people pay me to do it, because it's it's really time consuming and getting links is tougher and tougher. So yeah, one more time, you need to do your keyword research. You need to optimize your content using the right places, which is in my checklist if you want to download that. You need to create really good content, amazing if possible. You need to promote your content. And you need to get links to that content and to your website in general. So that's it. Um, you can download the presentation at this link, and it's uh, bit.ly slash SEO minus Swiss, or you can just grab it from here, or I'm sure it'll be available. Um, Isabel, you'll be making that available anyway, right? So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So yeah, all of this stuff you can you can get from my presentation. Um, you don't have to madly write all of this down. Uh, you can find me generally on Twitter or on LinkedIn. I'm also busy on Instagram at the moment. Or you can email me directly, no problem. Feel free to email me. Um, and I guess we might have a couple more questions. I'm just looking to see if anyone said anything. Nothing here. I have a question, actually. Um, when you're talking about links and the fact that it's a lot of work, are we talking about connecting with... Uh, so you're doing this work for, for companies. So, for example, you have a client who is um, a coach, for example, and uh, you're going to try to see, based on their business, who could be a good uh, other business that would be connecting with them in terms of what they do. And then you contact them and say, hey, I have this client. Are you interested in uh, having a blog on your website for them? Is it that kind of thing? Yeah, I mean, that's the easiest thing to do. There's, there's a bunch of different ways you can do it. Um, I mean, some people have access to websites. For example, I write on three websites. So I can post articles whenever I want on these websites because I've built up trust. So I can strategically get links on these websites if it makes sense. I'm not just going to insert your website because it's, you know, if it's completely out of context, like best camera store in the middle of an article about building <laughs> your your brand or something, I'm not going to do that. It, it doesn't help you anyway. So yeah, it has to be relevant. But then the next level of things is, yeah, whether you know people who are willing to put links for you or you can go out and write content for people. Um, you approach them, you say, I'm a writer or I have a blog and I want to write you a piece of content about this topic. And while you're writing about that topic, you try to find a way to get a link back to one of your relevant pieces of content. Okay. And if that's totally not possible, you can put a link in your biography down the bottom because most websites will give you a section below your blog post that says, Ashley is a WordPress and SEO expert and he blogs at Mad Lemmings and then that Mad Lemmings will be a link 
and that link will go back to my website. So I'll get that automatically and they have no problem with that. Um, but if I'm getting stuff for clients, I blog as me and then I get them links within relevant content back to their site. It gets harder when they don't have any content. So if they only have five pages and it becomes more difficult to find a reason to link to them. I, I do find ways, but um, it's better if you blog. It's easier to link to you if you blog for many reasons, even if people want to link to your posts because they're awesome. That's the best reason. And yeah, if you're not blogging and you're not creating anything useful for the world except selling products, then it's really hard. It's really hard to get links. But that's one of the, one of the three ways that, that I do it. There's a bunch of other ways, but yeah, they're the three sort of main ways. And then Kelly made a comment, not a question, but more a fact. It's worthwhile signing up for Ashley's SEO checklist. It's terrific. <laughs> Just for our listeners. Thanks, Kelly. <laughs> Any more questions, last minute questions? Well, anyway, this will be available for replay in a few minutes. And I send the groups uh, the information. So I will put the link again for the presentation in my mm -hmm. email. Cool. All right, thank Great. you for spending time listening to me, everybody. I hope you uh, got something out of this. And yeah, if you have questions, even if you didn't understand something or you want to dive deeper into something uh, and see how it can apply to your business, just yeah, send me an email. Um, Ashley at madlemmings.com and yeah, I'll answer your questions. No problem at all. Yeah, and I'll forward them to you if I find a few more questions I missed. Yeah, if there's anything on the yeah. uh, meetup, then, then yeah. we'll do that. Okay. Well, thanks everybody. And next webinar will be about how to register a business in Switzerland. And it's actually coming up quickly next week. So I look forward to having you for that. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye.